Well, today I'm going to be repairing the crack on this 1936 Chevy Fender. So, you can see this is a fairly common thing on vehicles from the 1920s all the way up to the uh, 40s and early 50s. So let's begin by surveying the damage here. You can see that it's been uh, repaired very poorly in the past. And when we look down the side, you can see that it's bulged out here. And then there's also, unrelated, but there is a dent in the body line right here. So we're going to have to address that while we're working on this. And if we look at the body line here, you can see it's also cracked along this edge. And it's actually been pushed up. But... This is hard to tell on uh, camera here, but the actual wheel opening, when they welded this, it was splitting apart on them. You can see how it kept growing and they just kept welding and welding. And so this fender is actually flat all across the top here. So when we go to fix this, we will have to pull this whole wheel opening back slightly to get this to the proper radius. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start by cleaning up all this mess here and uh, see what we have left to work with. I'd like to save as much of this as I can. This is going to all have to be replaced here. Well, so this edge cleaned up a little bit here and uh, as with our dent repair theory we're going to start on our edges and body lines and then work our way into this. So our first task is going to be to reconstruct this. What I'm going to try to do here is I'm gonna start by welding this and I haven't quite decided uh, what I'm gonna do here yet and then we'll bridge this in I got the edge very crudely welded back into place. Wasn't going for nice, perfect looking welds. I wanted good, hot, solid welds. So uh, just got it kind of roughed in for now. There's no point in getting it absolutely perfect at this stage. But I wasn't going to weld this. I was going to replace this section, but I thought in the interest of trying to keep this repair as simple as possible, I would just go ahead and weld it back up. So we did that and uh, now see that our the bulge that was here has flattened out. We've got a nice continuous profile there. However you can see the importance of starting with the edge first because right now this front edge is lower than this edge. So if we had started up here, we would have locked all of this in and this would have been misaligned when we went to fix that. So that's why we're doing this first. So the next step is gonna to be to cut all of this out, remove that, and then pull the front edge of this fender back this way, which is gonna to help to bring and rotate this up and then we can bridge all of this in and we'll get this all put in. Instead of making this piece all one unit, we're going to separate this into two separate repairs. I'm going to start with this edge, reconstruct that. Once that's done, then I'll do this last. So. Oh, looks like we need a new fender. Okay, so uh, what I did here 
as I supported the fender at the back and then pulled the front that way a little bit. Uh, it ended up having to come back about an eighth inch from where it was. So that combined with this uh, lip being all pushed up is what was contributing to uh, the wheel opening not looking good. And I would say also template the, the other side, but unfortunately this is the good fender. So this fender is going to become our pattern for the other side once it's all repaired. But uh, what I used here is uh, just found a piece of rod that was the same uh, thickness as the rod that's inside here. This actually came out of a 1935 maple leaf hood hinge, which uh, just so happens to be the same as this. So it's also, this isn't really necessary, but I did offset the uh, welded in section of rod from where I'm gonna be welding in the outer sheet metal piece. A rod is welded here and here, and then our other seam will be offset from that. That way we don't have, uh, we were able to get a good solid weld into this rod. Again, probably not really necessary. It just helps to make the repair a little bit uh, better, I guess. Or now we can say we tried at least. So next step, I'm gonna get this section here put in and uh, then we'll stand back and look at the profile again some more make sure we're happy with it and we move on to this last you can see this is all misaligned here but uh, this is hammered down and this is hammered up and uh, it's all wonky from being welded 600 times so I don't care about any of this right now the only thing to watch out for is at the where it ends you want to make sure it's not uh, buckled up or anything here because that would mean that we were we pulled it back too far but when i look at it our profile here is still good there's no stress in this area so it just means that we just need we'll have to hammer all of this back straight to where it needs to be but again we're focusing on this right now so don't care about any of this focus on this Okay, so I took a piece of 18 gauge and roughly cut it to the size. I didn't get it cut exactly yet because it doesn't matter. And then I just marked out roughly where I want my body line to be. So in the spirit of keeping this repair all GM, I found this inner door frame piece from the 33 Chevy that I chopped. And it just so happens that this edge has the same profile as what we're trying to create here. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp this together, sandwich it in, and then I'll use this chisel with a dulled off end to beat the body line into this. So we got our little patch there uh, welded in and just kind of loosely hammered back, not getting too fancy with it at this stage, but uh, now at least our edge is solid and uh, reasonably straight. So I'll try to cover more of the welding. I didn't film. I didn't film any of the welding on this. It's uh, just such a small area that you can't really see anything, anyways. So I'll try to cover film more of the welding when I do this section here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to get this all kind of hammered back. It's all pretty lumpy and stuff, so we'll get it as straight as we can before we start uh, baking this filler piece. So these next couple steps are going to be extremely critical to the success of this project. So you're probably going to want to pay attention to this. First, I'm going to take a roll of uh, Gorilla Tape here. And we are going to very carefully apply it to the underside. 
make sure that it sticks. Try to minimize the amount of wrinkles in the tape. Gonna add an extra piece here because I don't want this to wrinkle. So right about here, I can feel it's just barely on the edge. So I'm just gonna take another piece of tape and apply it in this area. So that should be good there. You see we've got a nice uniform application of tape here. It seems to be sticking fairly well from the underside. So we'll move on to the next step here. So now what I've done is I've taken some short strand fiberglass filler and I like to mix it up on a old piece of cardboard. The reason for that is the cardboard has a lot of oils and nutrients which will absorb into your filler and help with uh, paint adhesion at a later date so it's also important to not spare the hardener you want to use as much hardener as you can because the more hardener you use the stronger the repair will be so let's get this mixed up and then we'll go from there Now it's important to let our filler harden for two to three weeks. So now that it's nice and hard, we're ready to sand. The harder your filler gets, the easier it is to sand. So always make sure you give it plenty of drying time. Well, thanks for sticking around to the exciting conclusion of our craft repair video. I hope you found that useful. Now I know what some of you are going to be saying. This is just going to crack again. You can't use filler to fix cracks. It's going to rust. I can assure you this repair is very structurally sound. Not only is it structurally sound because we use the fiberglass filler, we reinforce it from the back with the Gorilla Tape and it's also dent resistant, rust resistant, and waterproof. So this is a far superior repair to doing any kind of sheet metal welding in this area. There's no distortion from welding from the heat. So, you know, I'm very pleased with how this came out. Just to prove the worthiness of this repair to any of you who may say this is the wrong way to do this, I'm going to take my hammer and I'm going to hit it, and I think you're going to be very impressed with the results. I traced out the shape that I need on a piece of 18 gauge steel. Now I'm going to take my mallet and my bag of sand and I'm just going to hammer in a little bit of pre-stretch into this. I'm not going to get it totally perfect because uh, I am going to be doing a ton of hammering and welding on that fender but I just want to get it started in the right direction so
So that's going to be close enough for now. I'm going to trim off all this excess material now, and then we'll start fitting it into the fender. Well, we got our patch piece tack welded in here and just kind of beaten back into shape. So uh, what's really critical on these is to get a pretty uh, tight gap all the way through. And the reason for that is if you have a large gap, you have to use more filler rod or wire to fill it. And that wire is harder than the parent material, the metal here. So we want a nice tight gap so that we're basically fusing the metal back together. One last thing I'll mention, you can see there, I've rounded this corner. So I've done it both ways uh, with patches where I just put, go do a square edge rounding corner. This doesn't make a whole lot of difference from my experience, but it's always good practice to do as much as you can the right way, I guess. So that way, when we go to weld this and it goes horribly wrong, at least we can say we uh, tried and we did everything that we possibly could. I do have new fiberglass fenders on order for this in case this does fail, but uh, we're gonna just try to make this work here. So I'm gonna get you set up and I'll get this all welded together and then we'll come back and see, uh, see how we fared out. So we're all welded here. We uh, got a good solid weld, good penetration and nice and hot. And uh, it has sunk in a bit, especially along the top here. So uh, the reason for that is every time you weld something, it expands slightly and then it contracts and it contracts or shrinks more than it expands. So that leaves us with a low spot. So what we'll do now is we'll get these welds sanded down and then I'm gonna go and uh, with my hammers and dollies and just start beating on it and getting it pushed back into shape and we're gonna stretch it back to uh, where it's supposed to be. And uh, we'll go from there, I guess. So there's the weld sanded down. So what I'm using for that is this uh, grinder here with a 50 grit pad. And, uh, and if you saw my last video where I was repairing the dents on this fender, you can see just how quickly this thing will remove material. So all I'm doing is just going across very lightly, low RPM, and I'm just removing the, the weld. And then as soon as I start to touch metal, I stop. You don't want to go any further than that. You don't want to get it totally smooth right now. It looks like garbage right now, but that's okay. All we're doing is just sanding off the top of the welds. And then when he touches metal, that's when we know we have to stop. So there's no sense in trying to get this all smooth right now. The thing with this stuff is it always looks worse before it looks better. So if you try getting this all smooth right off the bat, you're just gonna end up digging a hole in the metal and thinning it out which we're trying to avoid so now we got the welds sanded down you can kind of see along the top here how low we are and it's not only is it sunk in but if we look at the profile here it rocks 
and then we look at the profile here, this sits flat. So, so we've got a pretty substantial low spot all through here. That's from the shrinking effect of welding it. So, uh, and all through here, we've got some misalignment and things like that, but we'll uh, take care of that in the planishing stages. So start out, um, I'm just gonna take a, a dolly like this, fairly rounded one. And I'm just gonna go on the inside and just start bumping it up here, just so I can get some shape back into it. And then from there, once we're kinda in the ballpark, it's gonna look like a lumpy bag of garbage. That's okay. So after that, we're gonna go over the weld surface and we're gonna planish it. So uh, planishing is basically stretching and smoothing out the metal. So what's happening is we're doing a hammer on dolly. And you hear that little ting? It means you're stretching the metal. So there's a metal sam piece of metal sandwiched in between here and a hammer, and every time you hit it, that metal is trapped and doesn't have anywhere to go, so it expands. And that's what's gonna help with the shrinking effect from the welding. So here we are after about a uh, half hour or so of hammering and uh, messing around. I just gave it a quick sand here. And you can see our shape is kind of back into it and uh, you know we're still a little chunky through here but uh, not a huge issue. If you were smart you could uh, just go straight to filler now and uh, that would be a totally fine repair but because I'm not going to be satisfied until I've completely destroyed this fender let's uh, carry on and see what we can do well patience is starting to wear thin on this thing so uh, I have to go medieval on it got my file got some uh, black paint sprayed on there for a guide coat and uh, let's start making a mess of this fender Uh, we just got the sole smoothed out now with the file. It's looking fairly good, I think. We're just gonna, gonna go over it with our uh, grinder with uh, 80 grit and just uh, remove all these file marks. And uh, I do want to point something out though that I forgot to mention when I was repairing the dents on this. You always want to think of a uh, panel when you're repairing it 
as a whole panel. It's not generally not a good idea to just focus on one area at a time, especially when you're trying to finish it to this kind of level. So the reason for that is you get this totally perfect and if you have a dent here, you know, fix that, then it's just going to screw up everything you just did here. So you really got to, on these round panels, you can get away with it a bit more. They're a lot more forgiving because there's so much crown. Um, there's so much crown in it that you can really just kind of work it as you go and like something here isn't going to affect a dent over here because there's so much curve that it has enough strength to hold itself but the reason I didn't fix this whole thing at once is because the damage is fairly localized to one area there and then there's more damage you know way down here and whatever so there wasn't really a concern with that on this but you should always do as I say not as I do so it's generally good practice to always go over the whole panel and think of it as one complete panel rather than multiple individual repairs. Call that good from far and far from good. Not great, but uh, I've lost interest in the project, so uh, we're gonna call it good enough for now. Main thing is the cracks all gone. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the exciting conclusion of the crack repair video. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Why didn't you just use fiberglass? Won't the metal just crack again? Well, I'm so confident in this repair, I'm going to hit it with this big hammer. And I think you're going to be really impressed with how well this holds up. Wow, did that hammer ever make a mess of that fender. Wasn't expecting that repair to fail. Good news is, my fiberglass fenders are on the way, so we'll be able to get going on that 36 again pretty soon. I'm sure not all of you uh, have a TIG welder, or you don't have a disgusting crack that's been poorly repaired two or three times in the past. So in my next video, I'm going to show you how to repair a crack like this using a MIG welder. So stay tuned for that.